So as he leaves with his new zombie slaves, the biker chick uses her husband's corpse as bait to lure one of them to her and open the door, thus allowing her to attack the mortician and lock him up together with the zombie. In the meantime, the psycho sluts continue to discuss whether or not they should go back and start getting into a somewhat heated argument. At least until their leader completely loses her shit and starts insulting them all. Huh? And our little, little sweet Rusty, our little Rena Gash, gonna open up for business again in TC. Gonna go back and be the gang bang queen of the roadies. I'm gonna produce. You know, you gotta stop lying to yourself, kid. You bull dyke. Yeah, you bet your ass, mama. I'm a big, bad bull dyke. And my tongue has been places you don't even know you've got. And it's great. All right, we got white pussy, black pussy, Spanish pussy, yellow pussy. We got hot pussy, cold pussy. We got wet pussy. We got... Smelly pussy, we got hairy pussy, bloody pussy, we got snapping pussy, we got silk pussy, velvet pussy, nalga high pussy, we even got horse pussy, dog pussy, chicken pussy, come on, you want pussy, come on here pussy lover. Our heroine returns just in time to get in a fight with the rest of the gang because of her betrayal, while the zombies finally actually arrive at the town and start attacking the townspeople, thus giving us the first honest to god badass zombie killing moment. Well. Finally! Man, that only took us... 45 minutes?! Motherfucker! 45 minutes before we actually get some fucking action?! I'm sorry, am I out of line for wanting a movie called Chopper Chicks in Zombie Town to actually have Chopper Chicks in a town battling zombies? They're not even in the fucking town! Oh, I'm sorry, I guess they literally just sat their leather-clad asses down right outside the town where they were chased out. Anyway, they all hear a crying baby in the burning building upstairs, and two of them run off to help. That is, if by help you mean throw that little fucker right out the window. <sighs> what an asshole! So as the baby is saved, the townspeople arrive and immediately assume the chopper chicks are behind the attack and prepare to lynch them for it. But as one of them goes to get some rope, he comes across a creepy sight. My husband, you think Your husband's dead! Tell him that! Okay! Now stop slapping me! So because this movie refuses to focus on one group at a time, we find out that the blind orphan boss from earlier is now surrounded by zombies. It looks like they're all doomed, but that's when one of them realizes that his testicle just dropped and badassery sets in. And they said there was no God. Game over. So apparently fully loaded rifles are standard equipment on any handicapped bus. Who knew? The chopper chicks and the dwarf assistant arrive at the bus for some reason and get to work on rescuing the kids inside and actually do a fairly good job. As they ride off, we finally learn why the dwarf was even working for that asshole mortician to begin with. He said he could make me tall. What? He said he could make me tall. You're small. You're blind. Yeah, and he's retarded, he has no legs, you're both assholes, I'm getting really tired of that joke, so can we please just move the fuck on? Thank you. As the townsfolk and the bikers argue about working together, the gang leader rides off wanting no part of it, but is of course quickly attacked by the zombies. Luckily our heroine comes to a rescue and a battle for survival begins. <laughs> So, why is that woman their leader again? After that, our heroine returns to the town, which has become completely overrun with zombies. She's joined by the dwarf, who I guess just ditched the blind kid somewhere, and they go to the hardware store to pick up weapons and get ready to kick zombie ass. Oh yeah, this is looking... wait, what the fuck? A stapler. 
Really? You're a biker chick. You belong to a gang of biker chicks who probably kicks people's asses just for fun. You find yourself in a town full of dead people whose ass you can kick without any consequences. You go to a hardware store with all your biker chick friends and you watch them grab weapons like bats and chainsaws and you choose a fucking stapler? What the hell good is that gonna do you? Yeah, that's what I thought. The others do a hell of a lot better against the zombies, but then again, that's pretty easy when they just stand still and take whatever you dish out at them, and start kicking ass left and right as the zombified mortician, apparently still having kept his mind, arrives on the scene with a carriage full of guns for the zombies to use, because apparently they can do that now. As the Cycle Slut's leader returns, they hole up inside an explosive storage and put together a plan to get all the zombies to go to the church and blow them up in there. We'll get them all in here, and we'll blow this damn place up. Blow up a church? Hey, I didn't write this thing, so don't look at me, kid. Oh, fuck. Oh, come on! That was a mistake! A, a slip of the tongue! I didn't mean it! They lure the zombies to the church by dragging around huge lumps of meat to make them follow, but are interrupted by the mortician. Oh shit! Tactical retreat! So as they lure the zombies to the church and get ready to blow it up, the mortician blocks the exit so the chopper chicks and the blind kids can't escape as our heroine rides in with a truckload of explosives. Somehow some of them actually do manage to escape, but the mortician kidnaps a blind girl in an attempt to get off scot-free, but he is promptly eaten by one of his own zombies. Back inside the church, things are looking grim as our remaining heroes are completely surrounded and the church finally blows up with them inside. But apparently they survived and it looks like a happy ending. But then... Thank you, random 4 minute screen time guy who has had absolutely no significance to the plot up to this point. We owe you one! And so the movie ends with the blind kids and the dwarf becoming honorary members of the Psycho Sluts as the gang rides off on new adventures. Well, that was... something. Considering it's a trauma movie with a really badass title, it's really tamed by the company standards. It is pretty fun once the zombie killing starts, but it takes entirely too long to get there and it's impossible to follow up until that point, but I will recommend this movie for bad movie lovers. If you really want to watch something fun from Troma, you're better off watching Lloyd Kaufman's fun movies like the Toxic Avengers series, or the much more recent and even more insane Poultrygeist, Night of the Chicken Dead. And with all that said, this is Horrible Horror, where I put my life on the line for your entertainment, and I'll see you later.